Hey everybody, before I head into Alpha Comics to go over this week's new comic book day, I wanted to tell you about the awesome CGC graded comic book that we're going to be giving away on Comic Week this week. Go to comicweek.com, hit the contest page, and then you enter into for a chance to win this Fantastic Four issue number 97 and a CGC 8.5. This is a beautiful cover here. It features the Fantastic Four family in their civilian clothes. They're enjoying a day at the beach, but hidden danger lurks in the shadows. I love this cover. It's a beautiful cover. Stan Lee, classic story. Uh, of course, you won't read the story if it's in this holder. You're going to preserve this for time immemorial. Beautiful example of a classic Silver Age Marvel comic. And you can win it if you uh, enter into our contest. And while you're here, before we get started, make sure you subscribe. We have 86 subscribers going into this week. I want to see 100 before next week, and I can only do it with your help. Anyway, we're heading in. We're going to look at the new comics, and I hope you enjoy the video. Everybody, I'm Charles Morgan from Comic Week, and I'm at Alpha Comics with Alex Smith, and we're going to go over this week's new comics. Of course, you'll remember Alex from the variant version of our June 5th issue. Yeah, and it was on Betamax, so uh, it would be very difficult to upload that to YouTube. But what we do have this week is some comics. So uh, we have a, quite a few number ones. We have some Carnage covers uh, and a new D&D book. We do have a new D&D book, which as the uh, crippling Dungeons & Dragons nerds that I am, I am incredibly excited for. All right, so uh, what, are we, what are you reading this week? All right, so this week the thing that I'm really excited for is actually a number one called Manor Black. Um, I'm a big fan of like magic and horror and darkness and uh, flipping through it, it actually kind of reminds me of another horror comic I really liked called The Unsound, uh, sort of fused together with Coffin Hill. Uh, only a lot more magic-y than Coffin Hill was. Um, it's the story of a patriarch of a family of sorcerers okay. who is looking for who is looking for the person that's going to succeed him, who's going to lead the family, and he has his, these children who are, are grown, and they want to take over the family, but they want to take over the family because they're power-hungry and awful, and he sees that. Right. And it looks as if he's going to take an outsider into the family to be his protege. And I'm really excited to see where it comes because this, so far, the first issue has been really solid. One of the things I really like about, though, is that cover. I mean, this, this sort of harkens back to, like, 1920s German silent films, you know, this sort of that horror, UFA type of horror films. It's very, it's very pulpy. Um, sort of the way that they've structured it. It reminds me a little bit of, oh gosh, uh, Dark Shadows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It reminds me a lot of Dark Shadows when I read it, especially the whole, you know, magic and family name and that whole, that whole chestnut. Yeah, and this is Cullen Bunn, so if you, uh, you like his writing, you definitely want to check it out. What else are you reading, speaking of horror? Uh, speaking of horror, I'm go you're going to notice a theme. Uh, Ice Cream Man, I think, is a critically underrated series. It's a horror anthology series, and I'm going to do something vaguely sacrilegious in comics to show the cover. The comic, this issue itself in particular, is a palindrome. Right. They actually made it to, if you read it forwards or backwards, it's the exact same comic. And I really enjoyed that. I thought that that was a really cool concept. And I think, again, Ice Cream Man has been a really solid horror anthology series, which is exactly my kind of jam. With Ice Cream Man, murder is the mixin. <laughs> Just sprinkle in a little bit of, of murder and horror and viscera. So a couple of the things that I'm keeping an eye on this week, uh, you know, Spawn is on the road to 300, if you haven't seen their uh, issues of late. Uh, at the San Diego Comic-Con, they sold an exclusive variant, which is actually quite beautiful, uh, sort of a purple sp uh, background with Spawn, uh, 500 copies, and that is going for 300 bones. That is on uh, eBay right now. That is many bones. S super high demand, but uh, there is a virgin cover and a you know, regular uh, trade dress uh, version of two ninety nine. The issue before three hundred. Paper girls. <sighs> you know, this is the quality. I have so many people who are so sad about yeah, this. Yeah, this is a very qual quality, high quality image title. Uh, so it's on its thirtieth issue, and it, it wraps up with this uh, double sized. 
uh, version. So, uh, you know, this is something I think that uh, it's one of the key comics of the week. Definitely want to check it out, and I'm not going to spoil a single thing about it. That's probably fair. Only to say that Brian K. Vaughn's writing has been pretty tight in the series. I'm I'm very very biased to Saga personally, but Paper Girls, his writing's been really really tight. It's been really really strong, and it. It's a sad ending. Like, even the cover is kind of sad and nostalgic. Right, it's right, very right. stand by me. Right. This is really sort of the comic book uh, Stranger Things, you know? So, um, but yeah, so that, that's going away this week. So that's your last chance. And uh, The Batman Who Laughs, seven issue miniseries, concludes this week as well. So, uh, what else are you reading? Uh, so, one of the big things that I've been looking into, I actually very recently sort of stumbled into it, was uh, Sham Comics. Which, from my understanding of reading through it, is an incredibly ridiculously irreverent rewriting of classic, like pre-code era comics. Right. They took them and they wiped all the all the writing clean and just completely wrote in absurdity. It's it's in it's almost like a stoned college student was given a comic book version of a Mad Lib. Right. And I just find it increasingly entertaining. I I read so much dark, intense right. storyline right. that there's a moment where I'm like, ah oh, yes. Robotica, the robot that cannot learn to love. This is significantly more amusing than reading Monstrous. So is this a network cable humor or is this a premium TV? Oh no, this, TV? this is uh, this is decidedly a premium TV sort of sort of read. I would decidedly not give this to a child. But, you know, immature college student, absolutely. Right. Precocious child? Uh, hyper precocious. <laughs> Uh, Canto number two is out. Uh, re I read Canto last uh, last issue. This is cool. This is a really cool story. Did you get to read the first one? I didn't. Um, Sold out. It hit the store shelves and it was gone. It was gone in like thirty minutes of us opening. We had people who were like, "Do you still have Canto?" And I was like, "No." But now I'm really sad because I want to see what this story is. I, th I think this is going to be gone too. Uh, so what what you have with Canto uh, is. A like a little tin man with the most endearing eyes imaginable, uh, and a, a member of an oppressed people, and he has to go on a journey to save tin person that he loves. Oh God, that's really cute. <laughs> it's it's horribly cute. That's uh, but that's it, painful. But it's but it's uh, it, it was amazing. Um, I think IDW just kills it sometimes. They just come out with these off the wall. Very small ideas that are just immaculately executed. But yeah, so Canto 2 is out this week. If you can get a copy, I would pick that up. And uh, speaking of another thing you may or may not get a copy of <laughs> is uh, Marvel, uh, Marvel Comics Presents number 7. So we were talking before we sh started shooting we were. that uh, you have to, as a, a comic book store typically has to order two months in advance. You do. You have to order two months in advance and depending on the FOC, which is the final order cutoff, you can adjust your order like a month ahead of time. Right. So you wouldn't have had any idea when you placed your order for like eight or ten copies of this that Wolverine's daughter was in number six and that is selling for like $60 now on eBay because nobody cared. Nobody knew. Um, and then they did the same thing with uh, Walking Dead, the final issue of Walking Dead. Nobody knew. Right. Nobody knew what was happening. That's sometimes why some of these issues can become so valuable is because they don't print as many because there aren't as many ordered. Right. And then all of a sudden we're scrambling and we're like, did you know this was going to happen? Did you know this was going to happen? And I feel terrible because a lot of times when I find out this is happening is because I've got people, you know, clamoring through the door to be like, do you still have Marvel Comics Presents number six? And I was like, no. And then they're like, and you suck. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it's like, I feel so bad. And I'm like, as they leave, I'm like Googling under the table, what happened in that what issue? Happened? I didn't get to read it. Well, you know, what's making matters worse, you know, they, they did a second printing of six where they had a one in 25 variant where they took the page that Wolverine's daughter appears and made that the cover, so which is like the laziest thing imaginable. But now you have her first cover appearance on a second printing that was a one in 25 retailer incentive variant. And who would have done that? I, I can't imagine anyone that could, because it's one of those things that it's like, it, first printings are always going to be infinitely more sought out than second printings. And a lot of times I'll have people come in into the store and I'm really excited to find them a book and, I'm, and they're like, well, hold on, is this a first printing? And I'm like, are you gonna read it or collect it? Because if you're gonna read it, second printing should be all right. But if you're gonna collect it, you're gonna probably want a first printing. Right. 
Right. So anyway, there you go. Marvel Comics presents number seven. She's in it again. So definitely. So her second appearance, not cover. Second appearance, not cover. Good gracious. So uh, you got uh, two more titles. I do indeed. So one of them is going to be the ni number 96 of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mutants in and a half show. They are, in fact, actually they have an entire shell. If a turtle has got half of its shell, it is probably a dead turtle. The shell would fall off, right? It, it would indeed, even though that their spines are, you know, built into the shell. Anyway, enough about turtle facts. So the last issue of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number five had a character that everybody was like, is the new turtle, but she was decidedly not a turtle, so everyone was very confused until the last panel where a blood transfusion turns her very turtley. Right. And this is the first issue to resolve that and discuss uh, what are the repercussions of turtle blood transfusions? Because apparently they turn you into a turtle. Well, now at least one of the turtles can find love. I don't know how I feel about that. Because they're, t they're turtles and they're also teenagers. Well. <laughs> Oh God, no! I don't. I, I don't want you to finish that sentence. And what else you got? Powers of ten. And the fun, yes, the powers of ten, also referred to as the powers of X, is the new X Men title. Uh, so essentially, what they've done with X Men is they've burned it all to the ground. They've decided that after extermination and X Men Red and Blue and Gold and Chartreuse and Vermilion, they decided that they're like there. There's too much going on. We're just going to wipe the slate clean and start over again. So there's going to be, there's the House of X, which came out last week, right. and then there's the Powers of X, which is starting this week, and I'm spoiling nothing. So we have some Carnage covers to show you guys this week. Uh, Fantastic Four, you know, gets a pretty big, absolutely Carnage cover. You have Captain America. Uh, Black Panther, this one's pretty cool. I liked the Black Panther one. It it looks like something fresh out of a nightmare, but I thought it looked way cooler than some of the other ones did. And uh, this gentleman named Thanos. I have not heard of Thanos. Is he is he big? I, I hear he was in a movie at he, some point. He's big in Japan. Exclusively. So uh, we also have uh, this week uh, this, the uh, Batman Last Night on Earth, number two. I like Joker in the Lantern. I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm so tired of Joker. <laughs> I know, but if Joker is if Joker was just his head in the lantern, like making like funny quips, I think that that's like where that character could go for a I, while. I would be fine with it. Actually, one of the things that I'm really excited is uh, Scarecrow, who is one of my favorite Batman villains. Right. Shows up in this one, and the design that they have for Scarecrow for Last Night on Earth is so creepy and awesome. And he's all of his fingers are like tipped with syringes, right. and I'm like, oh, this is so, this is like a Silent Hill villain. This is great. Right. So we got some more. Uh, well, let's go over our number ones this week. They're quite a few. So there's going to be the Venom Annual, which is going to be numbered one. Right. Another annual. Another annual, which is the Justice League Annual, number one. That's Justice League Dark. Oh, yes, I, I forgot. I always, I always miss the dark part. The Green Lantern Annual. I feel like there's, there's a theme sort of emerging here. Uh, Death's Head number one, uh, which is a completely new series. It does have Wiccan in it, so I'm super excited for it because I really like that character. It's also got a Fly Axe body spray ad in the back. It does, uh, you know, <laughs> yes. how, how you do. You and have it's the appropriate that they call it the freshman because that was, you know, the categorical scent of high school for me. <laughs> right. So we got uh, Valiant has uh, The Killers number one. The Killers number one, which I am. So excited to see what is going on in that series. Knights Temporal. Knights Temporal number one, which is going to be an Aftershock series. Another Cullen Bun joint. I'm, I'm really into it. The concept for that one is uh, fighting like this evil, this dude, this knight who's fighting like this necromantic wizard dude mm. is now going to like, is ripped through time and is now in a modern era, which is sort of like a played out trope, but I really, I, I love it every time they do it. So I'm right. really excited for it. Uh, Red Winter. Red Winter number one from Scout Comics. Uh, Bray, good thing Bray's not here for this one. She hates uh, She hates gore. viscera and gore and everything. And I feel like Gut Ghost was specifically made to target Brianna. <laughs> right. <laughs> Gut Ghost. And uh, for you furries out there. Yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog, Tangle and Whisper, which is the exploration of two characters outside of the regular Sonic mythos 
if that's the proper word for that, of like Tails and Sonic and Knuckles and. I'm just gonna flip through here to see if there's any uh, rings. No rings. No, not a single ring in sight. They don't even go fast. I don't think they run in a loop-de-loop -loop once in that comic book. It's yeah. a travesty. It's yeah. a travesty, I say. Well, this is what he does when he's not at work. <laughs> So you got a, a new D&D book this week? We do indeed. So I am a crippling Dungeons and Dragons nerd. Um, and one of the things uh, by the artists at Penny Arcade, right. uh, which is a webcomic series, well, Coalition, I think at this point, they've got a lot of stuff that they do. Uh, Acquisitions Incorporated, which is based off of their, D their work with Dungeons and Dragons, they made an entire it's not a module, but it is an expansion. So it gives you new classes. It gives you a couple of episodes that you can run through. If you're if you're a big fan of Penny Arcade, especially Acquisitions Incorporated, or you want to try something new with Dungeons and Dragons, I think that this is going to be really good. My one complaint with it so far is that while it does have Penny Arcade's art, there's not as much art as I would expect, given that that's sort of how they got their start. Right. But at the same time, I mean, Wizards has just done a fantastic job the last couple of years, really, like, like sort of like letting go of the stranglehold they've had on D&D, &D, allowing, like, you know, Stranger Things, Penny Arcade, get involved, sort of bringing it to the people who actually play the game. And uh, so it's, it's really cool to see. And uh, it's probably... As, as much as it's a great time to play uh, to read comics, it's like a great time to play tabletop. We've been having more and more people playing Dungeons and Dragons, uh, weirdly enough, especially because of like Stranger Things, mm -hmm. uh, than we've ever had before. Also, I was wrong. This is very much a module. Like I originally had flipped through it and just seen like sort of the expansion stuff that they did, but there's very much like a full adventure sort of built into this. But with Dungeons and Dragons right now, especially the most recent edition that we're playing with now, fifth edition, it's right. the most like user friendly and accessible version we've ever had. As right. far as like building your own storylines and building your and you know creating your own characters and trying to make characters unique concepts, I've I've never seen freedom in any version, and I've been DMing like fourteen years. <laughs> And before we go, we'd like to thank the people who have liked our video last week on our Facebook feeds. We have Alan Phillips, actually, I went to high school with. He's one of your customers, too. He is indeed. Uh, we got Michael Chu, another friend of mine. Uh, Anthony Gonzalez, Dantea Banks, uh, Alex Stoner, Tom Salvadori, Lambert Benali, Chuck Lewis, Jeffrey Summers, Michael Bullington, Jason Stiegelmeyer, John Tipler, Joseph Brown, John E. Pickett, George McClug, Kevin Howard, George Schaefer, Brian Vapelt, Michael Sanchez, Edmund Cabrera III, Gina Batella, Lizetta Kokalis, Tay Downer, Jay Schiff, uh, Jeff Sheffer, uh, Mason Radcliffe, Terry Powers, Mark Murphy, Brad Will, Edgar Martinez, not the baseball player, uh, Justin Hoffman, uh, Michael Sellen, who liked my Nick Cave t-shirt, thank you, uh, Randall Jones, who gave the video a shout out, and on YouTube, uh, more soft thanks for liking the channel, we're up to 86 subs, hope we can get to 100 yes. by uh, next week, that's on you guys. Um, like and subscribe and for Alpha and for Alpha we've got thank you to Marion Clatt, Carlton Baker, Kenny Redman, David Scott Lane, Daquan Brown, Brennan Yall, Dwayne Cavanis, Michael Cox, Robert Ward, Eileen Everingham, Linda Redman, David E. Collis, John Ives, Joe Green, Will Bridenstein and Bridget Clare. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're all part of the comic community and we appreciate everything you do to support what we've done and hopefully uh, the information we bring you helps you make your decision. Thank you so much for all the support you've given all of us and we hope you enjoy this week. All right, take care guys. Bye. See you.